Punished for Protecting. I'm Francesca Amato, and I'm here today with Lee and uh, Ken, Kenworth, Kenworthy. And Kenworthy and his daughter Sia Kenworthy. And uh, this um, this is a short portion of their story. We will be bringing back a part two and possibly a part three. I'm going to read you guys a little piece of something that's written here in a GoFundMe account. Um, but before I do, I want to set a little basis here. This is a story of two whistleblowers, a husband and wife team, um, who were whistleblowers for 10 years. Um, and they were whistleblowers on the division and private jails. Private corporate jails. Private. Basically any of the corporate social services that have been privatized, like jails, children's social services, and quite a few more, mm -hmm. without any oversight, they're, mm -hmm. they're stealing money. Oh, I'm yeah. money from the taxpayers, and they're abusing the system with the more cases, the more bodies that they have, mm -hmm. the more money they get from the state. So basically, like, if you go to a corporate private jail, mm -hmm. and you're there for two hours, they get their full amount anywhere from 200 to $500 for that day. Okay. That's even if you just get a cheese sandwich and they kick you out. Mm -hmm. They bill the state that, that amount of money. So then that leads into judges who are going to send a certain demographic to jail for a charge and they'll let maybe you and me go for with a thousand dollar fine, they'll do 90 days, 90 days of $500 a day, mm -hmm. $15,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And for every child mm -hmm. that they open a case on, it's anywhere from ten to $15,000 a month. Mm -hmm. If they have any special needs, it's more. That close to doubles, which oh, yeah. why all of a sudden they want your child on medication. That's Because right. they have ADD or this or that that they're causing mm -hmm. with the damage that they're doing by removing the child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, on today's story, I'm just going to read you a little portion of this. But um, as you see, Lee 
had, me and his wife um, actually were, were 10 years whistleblower, whistleblowing, yeah. still whistleblowing, which still. is what we're all doing exactly. here. Um, and he just explained, and that was in the state of New Jersey. Um, state of New Jersey, we've been up and down the East Coast, yeah. over to New York, the Bronx, we've been okay. around a lot. Okay, yeah. so, so that kind of sets the basis to what we're doing. And this is a portion of a GoFundMe account that, that he has up, and then we're going to get back into the, the little um, more nitty gritty. I was an American. Uh, yeah, I was an American. I was an American. You can look that look that up on GoFundMe. Um, Go and also Google, on Google. And there's going to be some YouTube videos coming out, and we're going to get them over to you as well. Okay, awesome. So this is just a little section right here. It says, my wife, Shane Ling, and I have been political activists and whistleblowers for going on 12 years. The whole story, the whole story and getting it out to the public is and always has been our agenda to shine a light on the blank, blatant violation and trampling of our civil rights by a number of private contractors entrusted with our children's safety and ours. They have put our profit over well-being and safety. Boy, do we all know that. We began recording state workers, cops, and everyone involved to fully document and expose their perjury, as well as their assaults against our family in its entirely, entirety. And there's more to this, and I do recommend that everybody go and look at this GoFundMe. Um, I was an American. Give you back your phone. Um, so set set the precedence for those that are the viewing audience that are watching. Um, Lee, Shay and, and I um, initially we we've caused certain rallies. We've caused certain things to change in the court. When you gather information and you help people utilize that information properly, like do not go to their therapist because their therapists are never going to write you a letter and they're never going to tell you that. Mm -hmm. We found that out within the first three months of the case by saying, we're recording you. We're coming here for a letter to get our children back. If you're not going to be providing that, oh, the division knows we don't provide that. We work directly for the division. Mm -hmm. We have, that's one of the recordings. Then we went to our own private therapist and we spread that information around. Mm -hmm. You know, so information like that, it, it becomes dangerous because that's not what they're steering you to do. And in fact, they try to discourage you saying, no, no, don't use your own therapist. Why not? Right, right. If we need a liable letter in court, that's what that comes down to. It's called right. liability. Yeah. The state needs to re remove liability from itself and put it onto someone else and they'd like to put it onto a therapist. Mm -hmm. Without that, you never get your children back. Right. Never. Right. No matter what they tell you, it'll be two, three years, and that's why so many go through, they never got their children back, none of them would do it, and they put that in the documentation. No, they won't do it because that's not the procedure. Right. So right. that's what the judge sees and says, okay, well, we don't have a letter, we have you know, two good years, and then we have six months where they haven't shown up. Yeah, you're not going to show up to your services after you've been doing it for two years, and now you're trying to figure out where do I go to get my child back? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's all these people hanging in limbo right now. Just... Well, every single one of the agencies that they send them to, when you really dig in and you dig deep, mm -hmm. it's their friends. Right. They're not qualified. Right. The They're parenting classes it was a friggin' Oprah tape. Mm -hmm. They popped on Oprah, plugged it in, and the woman walked out. Mm -hmm. On three different occasions, we watched the woman outside with one of the caseworkers handing off their child. Family members who then open these companies who for every parent, much mm -hmm. like the jails now, right. for every parent that goes to the parenting classes, which is videos and someone that mm -hmm. leaves the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's a big game. It's not they get they 500 have... per head in there. So for the 15, 20 people I was there with, yeah. that family member just made 20 grand. Yeah, it's just it's yeah. because they have all their motives behind it. Basically. So what has happened to your family? From being um, whistleblowers, what happened with your wife? Did you want to let them, the viewing audience know? Or? Eventually, I mean, me, me and my wife, we've been capturing evidence on them for years. We have them falsifying criminal charges on both of us, keeping us on probation, holding us hostage in places, and we have all of this recorded. Um, my wife, she was, she was killed last year. She was, me and her were trying to get out of a cop's home who we were being threatened by. We brought the evidence to the township police. They did nothing. They turned around and threatened with them. Um, would you want to tell them what township we're talking Linhurst, about? Linhurst, Linhurst, New Jersey Township. New Jersey, yeah, nice. Linhurst, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, with the pending lawsuits and everything, I don't yeah, want to... Just, 
Yeah, and we just want to give. We want to set a basic. basic yeah, it's been a very emotional week for me and my family. We've been time. we've been in the car for nine days. Yeah. Um, the house that we were living out mm -hmm. at, one of the neighbors threatened the homeowner with calling the division out of the blue after already mm -hmm. calling the township for permits and work costing her fifteen hundred that was coming to my family. Mm -hmm. So as soon as that happened, I I know what time it is. It's time to you know, get my kids to a safe location. The two lawsuits are filed and the only leverage that they have over me right now is taking my children away, which is what they would do to me and Shay to mm -hmm. keep us quiet. And in them doing it, they did it extremely sloppy every mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. every time. False lying evidence and me and Shay were both intelligent and we covered every, every time they did it and we knew that they were gonna do it and we felt that we would go and we would take a test beforehand in the lab with our therapist and one the next day. Okay. So it's like, yeah, you're falsifying evidence. And to you're 10 steps ahead of them each time. Every single time. Because mm -hmm. you, you, when it comes to your kids, you mm -hmm. have to be, especially once you see the pattern. You, mm -hmm. This is a corporation mm -hmm. that it, they're not even, this isn't even really legal when you get down to it. This no, is in civil it. court that no, they're taking you. They're taking you to civil court right. and suing you for your child as if your child is civil property. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. The perversion that is happening right now, and this is all going back to the 1970s, mm -hmm. right at the same time that they were changing domicile laws as far as jail cells and children, and they put in all sorts of new little laws in place of this will be to protect the children, this will be the avenue that we go about it without that congressional amendment and whatnot, you would never have mm -hmm. this whole organization and the funnel of the money that's happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anything else you want to add before I introduce your daughter? No, no, no. I'm, I'm really emotionally broad. It's okay. And, it's fine. And know, we all get it. I haven't even grieved this year. I me, me and the kids, we've gone from one hurdle to the next hurdle. Mm -hmm. Me and Shay were caretakers for my grandmother, and my grandmother passed six months before Shay. The estate came to me and I've been fighting the lawyer and the state to get them out of the estate so that I could actually walk away with something for me and the kids to start over. Yeah, absolutely. So, so just so you guys know, um, uh, Lee and his family travel with their own camera crew here so one as man well. Hello, well, <laughs> one man camera crew. But it's still important because there's nothing that gets missed and they are very, very savvy. And they're also, and she was that. also, oh yeah, and also they make sure and made sure that there's not anything, there's not one dot or tittle that's missed. You know, I think what I'm talking about, they've got it down to a science, so there's no holes in their case. Um, whistleblowers know how to do that. That's called the thinking ahead process. You, it's, um, it's a game of chess and you have to, you have to win. And yeah. The, the saddest thing is it's not a game of chess that we want to be playing. It's no. <laughs> it's for our children. You're thrown in a war. You, know, like, you, you, you have to stay ahead. And then when they pull out the next dirty low move, mm -hmm. now you got to gather more evidence and figure out the angle that you got to fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we have uh, the, their daughter, Sia. Right? <laughs> and Sia, tell the audience how old you are, honey. I'm 10 years old. And you've been going through this for how long with your family? Since yeah. I was born. Since you were born? Yeah. Okay, well, um, Sia knows a lot of different things that unfortunately children should not have had to, had deal, with to deal with and yeah. had to be put in their life. Um, she's had to be, unfortunately, just told so many different things just to be able to function through what your family has had to deal with. Um, so you've been put through a lot. Um, we can maybe talk on one situation where the woman upstairs was banging on the door in the middle um, of the night. That, that's that's um, without getting too far into that's it. That's dealing with the Lynnhurst issue. There was an audio recording done on the homeowner who is an ex deputy chief of police out of the jurisdiction that a property sheet was falsified on me. On. Mm -hmm. Why would I ever live in this man's house? Mm -hmm. Like, I want everyone to ask that. Why would I ever <laughs> willingly go and live into this man's house? Mm -hmm. That was part of the arrangement for me and Shay as we're transitioning from one bad, horrible situation in Cage that they have kept us in to mm -hmm. the next. To the and we have that 45 minute recording where he says, No, I'm not letting you move out of this house. It's getting your wife sick. Mm -hmm. I'm not letting you give me $2,200 and leaving today. I don't care that your boxes are already packed. 
that's not the deal. Mm -hmm. You know why you're here. Mm -hmm. I want $10,000. Mm -hmm. Then I'll let you leave. And then he goes, wait, 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 wait. No, you want to know what? This is June. We have June, July, August. That'll be $6,600. You get me $6,600 and you get it fucking now. Pardon my language. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. We'll bleep it for keeping. Yeah. <laughs> um, you get it now and then I'll let you leave. Mm -hmm. He wants that. Because come the end of the summer, then Sia will be registered and Kai will be registered in school, so they will still know our whereabouts. Mm -hmm. We can't go too far off of our they little leash that they'll keep us on. Everybody knows about that leash. Basically. <laughs> so, so Sia, I just wanted to know from your perspective as a child, if, let me ask you a question. Have you had a lot of police dealings in your family life since you were born? Because yeah. of all of this, your parents being whistleblowers. And how has that made you feel about our police and law enforcement? Some of them are really good cops, but there's a lot that just, that need to understand what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. And do you, would you say if you were in a situation out in public and say somebody was attacking you, or if you were, I don't know, at a grocery store, or somebody, or, or, some, or out in a public we, place. Me and Shay said, so, you know, we've always, as we're raising them throughout all this, we've had to say mm -hmm. the truth. Oh, yeah. There is corruption. When you're in it, you're in it with the kids. There's good cops and bad cops. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's, mm -hmm. they, they have a jaded, especially after what happened last year and mom dying, mm -hmm. they became for a while terrified of cops. Well, that's what the, I wanted to hear from her, how you feel about them. If you were in a situation where somebody was making you feel threatened and you saw a police officer there to, that normally should be there to help you, would you feel, how would you feel? I, I'm curious to know how you would feel if you were in a threatening situation and then you saw a police officer. Would you feel like there's my safety? Would you help me, or how would you feel? I would feel kind of worried what's gonna happen, mm -hmm. but if I had no other choice, I guess I would have to so that would get be a, get the police officer's attention. But you would be yeah. uh, that would be a less option almost. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, probably, you'd probably be looking She's for somebody, looking for maybe option. looking for somebody else to help you other than the police officer. And I think that's really sad. I think that's really sad, Basically. and I don't think it should be that way. And and I don't believe that they're all bad. Obviously, we don't. That's and that's I know part your of one thing that, that, that we've been trying to instill right. in them mm -hmm. because of one the evidence that we've been gathering, mm -hmm. and for them to understand that it's not about mm -hmm. the cops. They, they right. want to stand as one and feel like yeah. stuff's getting thrown at all of them. Right, guys, you got to step aside and start to realize mm -hmm. if there's bad, corrupt cops in your midst, they are carrying a weapon yes. and executing with mm -hmm. that diligence mm -hmm. of protecting themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's worse than a gangster. Yeah, I mean, there's That's no worse than, than a gangster. At the end of the day, you mm -hmm. are in a position to protect people and you're doing that. Mm -hmm. You right. guys got to make the decision as cops. And but would you, would you, if you had an opportunity to talk to the police I talked to a group of police officers. Would, you, was it, would there be anything you'd want to say to them about their job and what you feel they should be doing with their type of work that they decided to take? They have to know why. They have to. Um, they have to start working for the people because our cops are supposed to serve and protect, mm -hmm. and they killed my mom, and that's not serving or protecting. Mm -hmm. So sorry. You're a brave little girl, you know that? And God has his hand on your life, so you just know that, alright? I mean this is all for a purpose. Sometimes you don't understand it, but there's bigger plans right now. Okay? I know you're not going through an easy time. And I'm sorry. Alright? Anything else? Alright guys, well we wanted to we wanted to show this this story today. There's a lot more to it. If you, if everyone can, yeah. please help oh, yeah. us as much as you can on the GoFundMe. A cup of coffee, anything. It's literally to get this documentation to you guys without 
while still protecting our family. Well, you why know? don't you talk a little bit about that GoFundMe too? That's for production. It's for production and and kind of our safety. You know, it's it's to keep this camera on rolling while the lawsuits are going on and underway, so that we had last week. There's a picture on our Tumblr. Um, three lug nuts and the rods were snapped. Mm-hmm. So if we had hit 60 miles an hour, it would have buckled mm-hmm. and broke the, the axle, basically. Two kids in the car were about to get in the car. That's the, That coupled with the threat of the division from a neighbor, which, like, we need, we need as much help as possible. There's over 500 witnesses that we're going to be filming and documenting and bringing to you guys. Um, we're going to be doing a daily... You know, once everything starts looking up for us, we're going to do a daily update as to where we are. Um, I'd like to also start to jump in and do a few other things, which I'm going to leave there for right now and we'll discuss. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anything that you guys can do, please, please help help us. Help us bring this to the forefront and help us change this. We, we need your help. So guys, I just want to say this is just one more family and why, and I, and look, I'm, I'm everywhere all the time <laughs> trying to do this, trying to get these stories out. This is one more family. This is another needless casualty of war. It shouldn't be. They should be living their lives just having a life, raising a family. That's what this should be. And it's, and it's not celebrating Christmas with their mother Christmas and wife. Mom. That's yeah. one thing. Everything is different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not... We don't even have a place to put up a tree, but Christmas was Shay. Yeah. You know, Thanksgiving was Shay. Okay. She made our world. She made everything. And you've been yeah. together since? We've been together since we were 20 years old. We've lost kids together. We had miscarriages together. We've, we lost our firstborn to a medical mistake, you know, and that was three years before having her. So for three years, we went through that loss of our child, that loss of, and that, that anger, and all those emotions that come with it, you know? Mm-hmm. It's been a long road for us. We've moved over 60 times since he was born. You know, I'd, I'd like to, yeah, I'd like them to, to go to one school for three years in a row. That would feel yeah. excellent. <laughs> that, would feel, that would feel great. And you know, you may have had to do 60 moves, but people are constantly on the move from the anxiety of chronic family court, chronic CPS nonsense, all this stuff. And my only, my only belief at this point is that yes, we're getting breakthroughs and and that's wonderful. We're seeing a lot of change happening. It took so long to get here, but we as one big global unit can really make this happen in one day, January 3rd, 2018. We have to shut it down. And I'm just going to keep doing these stories up until, and I'm going to even hopefully, you know, have my team put these interviews on steroids at this time because January 3rd, we have to shut it down, completely shut it down so that these voices are not just talking to the wind, okay, that this does not continue, that we don't have to keep having interviews like this. We can start really literally restoring these families back together again and bringing back whatever sense of, of normalcy back to families like this again. So we really need you. Is there anything else you wanted to add before we? I, I definitely want to add after that. What everyone needs to understand it's it's not just about the awareness in the day. We need these kids home. There are countless, countless cases. People look at the stories that are coming out. Look at the the review that coincidentally is being released this Thursday. Mm-hmm. DCF's workers, mm-hmm. yeah. judges, politicians, and the list goes on. Involved in pedophilia. Think about the children that have been robbed from families that didn't get to stand up, that are just now a spirit number, that only exists as a number. There's no oversight to check on where those children are at all. They're gone. They're gone to their families. They're gone to their parents. That's right. But they're not gone to these people who are doing this to them. That's right. That's right. And I just hope that they're all still alive. Yeah. involved in that that's what we're like the, that's what everyone needs to understand this is our future and this is tomorrow this is hundreds of thousands of children that's worldwide right. that they're doing this that's right. that's right without an oversight I, I don't feel that anyone should sit in congress senate anywhere and feel that you're doing a justifiable job starting a war or caring about anything else throughout the world when your children may be in harm's way that's right enough that's right enough absolutely i mean right and sia has 
Could you just bring it on her? She has a few things she wants to say. Um, there was this one time in there was this one time in the, the division where I asked him if I could be with my brother because he was in a tiny crib. I asked him if I can take him out or at least go in with him. And they kept saying no, that I couldn't at least be with him. They just left him there crying. Yeah. That was in the Bronx. That's when we lost. January third. January third. Do it for me.